Hello and welcome to another edition of Your Money 2.0. I'm Christopher Vialli, President and CEO of Cambridge Credit Counseling. As you may have noticed, many credit card issuers have begun increasing their interest rates and shrinking the credit limits of their clients. Now comes news that Americans have something else to contend with when it comes to their credit score, FICO 2008. Why is this so important? Your FICO score determines how far your money will go. Most major financial institutions use your FICO score to determine what type of risk you are. The higher the risk, the more interest you pay on loans. The new score and model, which the Fair Isaac and Company began developing two years ago, recently took effect in early 2009. While the general parameters used to determine your overall credit score have remained the same, the new score and model attempts to refine the process used to predict a consumer's default. Most of the changes within FICO 2008 are designed to more accurately depict the current credit climate. As a result, the new score and model will forgive occasional slip-ups. However, repeat offenders will be more adversely affected. For instance, accounts that are forwarded to collections that total less than $100 will matter less in the calculation of scores. Obviously, collections accounts are something you want to avoid. However, with the current state of the economy, this provision is a step in the right direction. The FICO model has been redesigned to take a more comprehensive overview of a portfolio to derive a score. So for example, if you have just one account that goes to collections, it should count less if everything else looks good. The new formula also favors a mix of healthy accounts, such as credit cards, car loans, personal and student loans. So maintaining a diverse credit portfolio should help an individual increase his or her score. There are, however, two changes that will bring down an individual's score. Both stem from an industry-wide effort to control risk, which in this case has to do with the amount of credit you're not using. These days, more lenders are closing cards that aren't being used. Keeping a card open represents a cost to the lender since they still have to send out statements every month, but it also represents risk since a cardholder could suddenly start borrowing against their limit as times get tight for them. Closing the card will negatively impact your score, so you may want to contact your lender to discuss their policies. The other change under FICO 08 is more troubling. As I mentioned earlier, it involves credit card companies attempting to decrease their exposure to risk by lowering the credit limits of their clients. Let's say you have a credit limit of $5,000 and a balance of $1,000. You're using 20% of your available credit. But if your lender reduces your credit limit to $2,500 without making any other charges, you'd suddenly be using 40% of your available credit and your credit score would come down. It's recommended that you use no more than 30% of your credit limit at any time, which could help avoid being perceived as a risky client by your lenders. If your lender reduces your credit limit, you can call them and ask them for an explanation and contest their decision. Finally, Fair Isaac made adjustments to its piggybacking provisions. Piggybacking occurs when a credit cardholder authorizes an additional user on his or her account, specifically so that person can benefit from the cardholder's good credit standing. While this practice has helped millions of college students and spouses establish their credit history, some disreputable organizations have been taking piggyback into extremes, charging large fees to allow consumers to raise their scores by using strangers' good credit standing. FICO has amended the piggyback in provisions to allow spouses and children to improve their credit profile as authorized users, but they have banned the inclusion of strangers. As always, you should review your credit report for accuracy each year. For information on how to receive copies of your credit report, visit annualcreditreport.com. For those of you that are interested in receiving a complimentary credit score, you can visit creditkarma.com. Well, that's it for this edition. We welcome your feedback and ask for your thoughts and suggestions by emailing us at yourmoney2 at cambridgecredit.org. 
Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Christopher Vialli from Cambridge Credit Counseling.